<laughs> What's up, Flick fans? There's a Borderlands movie out this weekend, and we're going to discuss it. Would you look at that? A ladder! Unfortunately, my design doesn't facilitate this type of... Based on the best-selling video game, this all-star action adventure follows a ragtag team of misfits on a mission to save a missing girl who holds the key to unimaginable power. This is directed by Eli Roth. Eli Roth does crazy, outlandish, bloody uh, horror movies, sort of. He directed Thanksgiving last year, and admittedly, even though I'm up and down on him as a director, I found Thanksgiving to be a really fun time. But you know what? He's doing Borderlands now. If you want to read the behind-the-scenes story of him getting involved, what they did with the first script that was written by the guy who did Chernobyl and scary movie, but also Chernobyl. That was exciting. But apparently when they brought Eli Roth on board, he was like, yeah, I'm good. I just read that on Twitter, by the way. I don't know if it's true. Should I have even said it? Uh, who cares? <laughs> this is a load of barnacles. So what this should have been, at least the way it presented itself to us in that first trailer was like the Guardians of the Galaxy of the video game space, right? Or, or the, the Mad Max-ish type of movie meets Guardians of the Galaxy because we spend our time in this wasteland of sorts where this team is forming before our very eyes in the first act. Kate Blanchett's character, she's sent off to uh, save this little girl, bring her back to her father. What a beautiful story, but do we trust her father? I don't. That mother back there is not real. Edgar Ramirez plays Atlas, and I feel like every time I do this, I defend Edgar Ramirez like, this guy's got it. He's a good actor, but he's giving a terrible performance in this generic action movie or this blockbuster. I don't know if I can do it anymore. This was, this might have been the last straw for me. I get it. Not great direction, poor script, all of those things, but this performance, I mean, at least uh, Kevin Hart was having fun. At least Jack Black was reading these terrible lines in, in a fun way. Edgar Ramirez, he may be having fun, but I wasn't. Got Ariana Greenblatt, Kate Blanchett, Jamie Lee Curtis, who was just talking about Marvel. So that was interesting. <laughs> it's fine. It's a paycheck movie. These actors have to work, and they're working here. They're working together. This team that is forming, uh, led by Lilith, who is Kate Blanchett's character, and admittedly, she does feel like she fits the role. I know people were complaining about the casting, but I I'm sitting here going, well, it's Kate Blanchett. Like, she's going to do a good job whether people like her in the role or not. And she does a good job. But then part of me is thinking while I'm watching this movie, I don't know if she wants to be here. You probably have two questions. Have I played the video game? And why are you rambling? Do you think this movie is actually good? Let's start with the video game. I have seen peers play this game. And I know people obsessed with Borderlands. But I don't know that much. I know very little. Like, surface level elements to where... I would recognize some things like, oh, okay, that looks recognizable. I still don't know if it was actually part of the game, but the Easter eggs and the nostalgia and all of those cameos, if they're even in the movie, I need to hear from video game fans. How did you feel about this adaptation? Did it work? Did it not work? Did it capture the games? So that's something I can't really comment on. Austin, just go play the games and then you'd understand the movie. No, I don't have that kind of time. Who does? <laughs> Number two, is it good? No, it's not. This is what early 2000s video game movies were and were classified as. They're just not capturing the spirit of the games. And again, I haven't played the game, so how would I know that? Well, it's not capturing any type of spirit other than this script is atrocious. I mean as generic and bland and boring as it gets, it feels like they took the outline, just the basic premise of Guardians of the Galaxy, Suicide Squad, uh, you know, like I said, a little bit of Mad Max in there, and combined it all together, fed it into AI, and that's the movie that we got. That's genuinely what it feels like, and I am... I am so baffled that these incredible actors are reading this dialogue and not making it much better. Sometimes you can have amazing actors reading terrible dialogue and it works, right? In this case, I'm looking at all these top tier performers and going, you're just not very good in this movie. And then I'm looking at Edgar Ramirez and going, maybe you're just... <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Maybe it goes back to Eli Roth. It's just a strange fit for this type of movie. It, it doesn't make sense. And I just kept waiting for something unconventional to happen. The movie actually starts out on somewhat of a fun note. You're kind of wondering what Tina's role is in all this and why so many people are after her. Then it turns out she's some sort of key to some sort of thing. And then that thing is sort of explained. But by the time you get to the end, things are happening. Kate Blanchett, she's, she's doing things. I'm like, what is going on? Maybe if I 
I was more familiar. But what is happening right now? I was so lost in the third act. Even though it's the most simple thing ever, I'm like, I don't think I understand. <laughs> you know what this movie doesn't have? A soul. And I feel like even people could look at this wasteland that they're in throughout most of the movie and say, oh, well, it's more colorful than the void in Deadpool and Wolverine. But that movie has a soul. The entire time I'm watching Borderlands, I'm thinking this is lifeless. It's not even one of those movies that's so bad that it's good. Uh, granted, there is one action sequence or a series of scenes towards the end. I'm like, okay, this is actually really fun. They put some thought and effort into this sequence. It was cool seeing Kate Blanchett and Green Blatt and even Kevin Hart get in on the action. Again, Kevin Hart's having fun here. He's not the problem. He may be miscast. I don't know, but he's not the problem. The problem is the lifeless and soulless writing that leads to the lifeless and soulless direction that leads to a messy product. And even after that really fun action sequence where it started to bring the movie up just a tiny, just a tiny bit. Brought it back from the depths of hell. We immediately get into something so nonsensical and rushed. I get it. It's a 90 minute movie. Thank God there wasn't more. But I'm like, what is going? This this is, you just ruin any type of momentum that you had. I'm just. <laughs> so what did you think of Borderlands? Did you enjoy this video? If so, dropping that thumbs up would be awesome. And stay tuned for our movie mode podcast this weekend where I get to talk about this movie more. So that's exciting. Oh, I can't wait. Borderlands is as lifeless as any video game movie in recent or non-recent memory. It lacks any sense of direction and barely has fun with its semi-interesting premise. I'm appreciative of certain cast members who are having a good time and one action sequence works, but the rest is a bland mixture of everything wrong with these types of blockbusters. What a waste. What a waste of time. Uh, again, I'm not going to give anyone flack for starring in this film. I'm sure at one point they had something, but it just faded with time, with this script, with this direction, and none of it came together. So, very unfortunate, but again, uh, you know, if you're a video game player, let me know what you think. I feel like I'm in 2004. That's what it feels like. All right, see you soon.